Welcome along to the channel. Uh, first uh, part of my diabetes uh, section. Um, just want to really reaffirm I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical prof prof uh, professional. Please check the video which I'm going to put down here, explains it. I don't want to go over all that, that again, but please check that out. Um, there's really no medical advice. I'm not going to give you medical advice on this because I can't. Because I'm not a doctor, I'm not a medical professional. Just short, sharp bites. This is basic. I'm going to try and give you this stuff in really basic terms so you can understand. Okay? Like and subscribe, and also put any comments, questions that you want in there. If you're not sure, if you're not happy about the video, if it needs editing, if you want me to pull it or whatever, please, I'm happy to listen to your discussion. So that's the first of all. So we'll just assume the first thing, and uh, let me tell you, so. 15 years ago, I got diagnosed as type 2. Well, actually, I got diagnosed as type 1. There's several types of diabetes, and we, I promise you I'm going to go into all of those things, but I don't want to jump you, land you with a load, a load of stuff. You've probably been told a load of stuff. You probably know a lot of stuff. So you, I'm, I'm, I don't know if you're new to this or not new to this, um, so I'm going to try and take it from a really low level. Um, I was diagnosed as type 1 in the UK because of how my how i how it came around later on when i got uh, when i came to uh, canada i got diagnosed re-diagnosed as type 2 so either the first diagnosis was wrong or something changed and that's going to be in actually another video i think i'm going to do a video for you on that so this is very very basic you've been diagnosed you've you've it's it's hard news i'm i'm telling you it's scary um a lot of things go through your mind like am i going to have to take injections for the rest of my life is if stuff going to hurt i'm going to have a blood tests have i got to take this am i going to lose my job uh, it's very scary so the first thing you need to do is take a deep breath and don't panic okay um, there are certain things you have to get off the bat. You have to be on top of this. Di uh, diabetes is a, a chronic illness. Okay, you can die from diabetes, not from diabetes itself, but from the um, from the side effects, from the, the the things that happen. If you have a good doctor and a good uh, a diabetes team, what they will do is they will put your medication to help prevent those things. It is not a death sentence. Diabetes has come on a long, long way since uh, it was first discovered and first treated, okay? People now, now know, live a longer lives, but number one, okay, a good medical team can make the difference. I've, I can tell you horror stories of doctors who have put me on crappy medication and I've nearly died, okay? Me the medications can mess with you. If you don't have the right medications, it can mess with your mind all kinds of things. All, think of actually diabetes, it's almost bulimic like you have a love-hate relationship with food. You can really mess yourself up. So you need to get a good doctor. You can, how can you tell a good doctor? Now, you've, everyone in Canada, and this is, I'm in Canada, but this applies to anywhere else in the world. If you're in Canada and you have a doctor, um, you can try out your doctor by asking him simple basic questions. If your doctor is fine with answering the questions and doesn't poo-poo you, or in fact Google up some questions, know the answers and see if they come back with you. If he's really good, he or she is really good, then you're fine. If any, and this is a big red flag, if any doctor tries to treat you themselves, right, run, do not walk. In this country, you have the, the little cards which you swipe, they're just after your dollars. They're not going to help you. If you have diabetes, you need a diabetic team. You must have a diabetic specialist. Now, there is no problem with your, do your doctor going through initially what you need to have and getting your meds and arranging blood tests and that. That's fine, no problem. But any time, if you say, listen, I really want to uh, talk to a nurse, I need to talk to a diabetic team, as soon as that doctor says, um, sorry, my, my camera is jerking because I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting there on my bed. Um, you can tell this is a professional video, right? Um, as soon as that doctor tells you, um, you, you don't need it. We can't do it. This or that. Anything which is a no, 
walk, don't run. Um, I had a doctor who did that. I changed my doctor and the doctor I'm with. The first thing, the very first thing he did when I, when I said, well, you know, okay, obviously I'm diabetic. He booked me in with a team. So this is what you need. Don't know if we can see this up here. You need a doctor. You need a good doctor. You need a doctor who will listen to you. You need a doctor who can uh, understand what you're talking about and give it to you in very basic terms, right? It's very, very important. The next thing you need is, I've got written here, a DM team. Or DM is short for diabetes mellitus, which is the, the Latin name for what we have. Now, your DM team, your diabetes team, consists of three people. An endo, which is short for endocrinologist, um, and they deal with diabetes type um, uh, issues and also I think thyroid and stuff like that. Okay, uh, DSN, a diabetic specialist nurse and a dietitian. Four people you need. Now your doctor you can see any time for refills and checkups and he'll want to, he'll want to check your blood pressure, he'll want to check your heart rate, all kinds of things, right? Your endo is your specialist. They're hard to see, and you'll only likely see one once every year or once every six months. Your DSN is a diabetic nurse, a nurse who is, almost, sometimes we call it a nurse practitioner, who's a nurse who specializes in diabetes. Very good. Um, and you will probably see her maybe, if, depending on how bad your diabetes is, if you're newly, um, newly diagnosed, maybe every couple of months, every three months, every four months. I see mine every six months. It's just, you know, they, they're up to date on everything you need to do, new treatments, new medications. They'll check your feet, your everything. So they're good. Um, and then a dietitian. Your dietitian and a good dietitian is worth his or her weight in gold. It's all, there's two things to know about, di well, three things to, to know about diabetes. Number one, medication. You have to be on the right medication. Number two, you have to have the right diet, okay? Three, you have to have exercise. All three of those things. Your dietitian is the most important person. They will help you understand food. And understanding food is the difference between life or death. You can eat chocolate cake. Did you know that? As soon as I was diagnosed with diabetes, I thought, I can't eat chocolate. But you can. You have to learn to eat smart. Food is not your enemy. Eating less is bad. Eating too much is bad. You have to eat the right amount of food and carbs and stuff. And we'll, we'll go down that route later, later on. So your dietitian, you need four people. Your doctor, your endo, your DSN, and your dietitian. When you have those people, and you've got a diabetic team. I'm with uh, Trillium Health because I'm here in Mississauga in uh, Ontario and I have a fantastic team. My endo is fantastic. I had a heart attack and luckily we were in the same hospital that she is and she came and she, she made, a, made sure I was okay. So that's the first thing you have to get. And again, red flag, your doctor tells you, I'm gonna look after you, run, walk, run, run away. You don't even stay with that doctor. The next thing is questions. There is, when I got diagnosed with diabetes, uh, a friend of mine who was a nurse said, knowledge is power, which is true for anything. So what you have to understand is, Dr. Google isn't always right, but you need to look up information, ask people, ask doctors, ask nurses, because not everyone is right. If you get two, one or two wrong answers, you, you, if you get one or two answers and they're not quite right, then keep looking. Have a list of questions, know exactly what happens or what's supposed to happen or what diabetes is. So when you go for your doctor's appointment and she says, well, this is happening, that's happening, your HbA1c is wrong or this or that, you know. When you then can come back and say, listen, I understand I'm on this medication, this controls this, but what about this? Because I know there's been times when I've been put on medication, I did not want to put it on, I did go on that medication because it was going to pump my pancreas and I didn't want that. So I had to think creatively and now luckily I'm on a fantastic regime um, and, you know, it's, uh, it, my, 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 my life is a lot more controlled. Diabetes is very, very expensive. 
if you do not have health care cover, you're going to be in a world of hurt. Depending on where you are, sometimes there is cover from the government. In the UK, there's 100% cover for everything with diabetes. Right? Shame on you, Canada, for not following the UK's example. You need to have, there are, there are schemes where you can get money off and you can get covered. I'm lucky I have two companies which uh, cover me, my own company and my wife's company, so I don't pay anything. Diabetes medication is expensive. Uh, there's cheap, medium and like the ultra st high stuff and the ultra high stuff keeps you alive and keeps you working. So uh, make sure you've got that. Talk to your health and talk to your um, your healthcare provider. Talk to your insurance company. Do not be afraid to ask questions. Diabetes is not the uh, the big boogeyman that it used to be. Okay, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be scared. Um, you have to tell certain people. Like if they ask, if you ask the question, you have to answer. When you when you're on the phone to your car insurance company. They'll go through a list of companies here in Canada, or at least in Ontario. No insurance company has ever asked me, have you got diabetes? Do you take insulin? In the UK, they ask you whether you're dependent or not dependent on insulin. In this country, they haven't. But if you've suddenly become diabetic, uh, talk to your insurer, say, listen, um, I've just recently been diagnosed as diabetes. They may ask you some questions. It will not affect your ability to drive will not affect your insurance. Your insurance won't go through. If you have what's called hypos and you collapse for no reason because your diabetes is not controlled, your doctor or nurse can stop you from driving by contact. They have a duty of care to contact the, uh, the whatever, the driver the driver, driver company, the uh, OA, o, uh, Ontario drivers, whatever it is. And they have to say, you're at risk because you're you can't control your, you know, control yourself. But as a general diabetic, if you check your blood sugar and do all kinds of things like that, nothing will happen to you. There is also some stupid uh, rule going out: must be five to drive. If any doctor, any DSN tells you that, tell them the talking rubbish. There is a, a not a rule. There is advice. And advice is different from a rule, and a, a rule is different from law. There is advice that says you shouldn't be lower than five millimoles to drive. There's a reason for that, because if your blood sugar goes low, you can collapse. It's not a law. There is no law on the books in Ontario, and I'm talking about Ontario, double check anywhere else, but Ontario, and I'm pretty certain anywhere in the country, because I'm on a ticket forum, and I ask this question doctors, lawyers, and judges. There is no law on the books which says you must check your blood sugar before you drive and it must be a certain level. You can get into your car drunk, right? It's illegal, right? As soon as you start the key, you're going to get booked. If your blood sugar is too low for you to drive and you can't control your, your driving, that's the same as being drunk. But if your sugar is 7 or 10 or 9 or 15 or whatever, it isn't an issue until you get into an accident. If they ask you if you're a diabetic and they check your blood sugar and your blood sugar is low, they will not, uh, you cannot be fined for that. You cannot go to jail for that or nothing. But what will happen is the doctors will say, listen, you had an accident. You were under uh, a certain amount of um, uh, uh, blood, uh, blood glucose. So we're going to temporarily stop your uh, your license until we get you back on track. So anyone tells you there is a law which says five to five to drive is talking bullshit. I'm sorry, it's wrong. If you think I'm crazy, you need to look on the Canadian law books and Google up the law because you can do that. Google up blood sugar levels for driving and stuff like that. You will not find a single. You will not find a single uh, law. If there is a law, put it in the comments. State the law, the rule, but not, the, not a highway code, not a code, a law on the statute books, an actual law. Okay? There isn't any. So I'm just telling you. That. So have all this information. Information is knowledge. So when you go to see your doctor, you, you, you're going, if you are a per type of person who just wants a tablet, pat on the head, doctors don't like that. They want to know that you're interested in your condition. It's your condition. They see hundreds of thousands of people every year. So you are not in, important enough to them. 
if you are interested, they will show an interest. I'm not saying that, you know, if you know nothing, they're not going to help, but this is important. Diabetes, like cancer, like heart issues, like any kind of thing, it's your responsibility. There is a wealth of information out there. Get it. Okay, now, third one. Find yourself a support network. You can't do it on your own. I've tried. Diabetes is such a messed up um, uh, illness that you have to have someone in your corner pocket. You have to have someone who's going to keep an eye on you because your mood swings, mood swings you're going to have mood swings. Um, you're going to have issues with eating food. You're going to have issues with a high, high glucose and low glucose, all kinds of things. Have someone in your back pocket. Um, if you're married, if you've got a boyfriend or a girlfriend, let them know. Say, listen, if I get irritated, I'm not being pissy with you. It's my diabetes. And also ask me if I'm okay. If it looks like I'm doing something out of the ordinary, check with me. Am I okay? Do I need to eat something? Do I need to drink something? Do I need to check my blood sugar? Very important. Diabetes is a real mind screw. Trust me, I've been there, done that. It will take you down to the lows and uh, it will, only you can pull yourself up. You need a support group. If you go to a good diabetes team, they will ask you, one of the questions they'll ask you is, how are you? How have you been feeling? And if you're not feeling good, they'll put you in touch with a local support group who you can just talk to people who've had diabetes. You have questions like, how do you deal with, like, I have to cook a meal of five and I can't, from feel of five, I can't do this. How do I do this? And this is how we do it. Okay, so you're not, remember this, you are not on your own. Do not be on your own. Do not try to solve this on your own. Always have someone that you can talk to, pick up the phone. I was very lucky, very blessed in my first couple of years. I had a fantastic nurse and I could ask her stupid questions. I, I took a double dose and then I forgot my dose and I didn't know what to do. Okay, after a f It's like riding the bike. After a few months, you'll know it's, it's not difficult. So get yourself a support group. Another thing which you need to know about is stress and hormones. Diabetes will mess around with you. And no, no, no doubt about that. Um, stress, if you are in a stressful job, your blood sugars will go up because the, hormone, the hormonal changes will put your blood sugars up. There is a reason, you can Google it up. So try and cut the stress down. If you're living with someone who's giving you stress, you may be best to just walk away because your health is important, okay? As a woman, we all know that, uh, uh, and you, you know that with women, if you're a woman, that you have your hormonal changes once a month. So for diabetics, we have that 24-7, 365. So if you add that onto what you're having monthly, that's even worse, honestly. So be prepared for, if you have a partner who's diabetic, or if, you're a part, or if you have a diabetes, let your partner know. Say, listen, I'm gonna get pissed with you it's I'm not getting pissed at you because I'm an idiot or a thing. Just check on me. Or even if I'm fine, it could just be the diabetes is messing around with my head. Just ignore me. I'm, I'm honestly okay. And I, I, I don't hate you. I just sometimes feel like I'm hating you. Okay. Do things to lower your stress. Jogging, running, uh, sex. Sex is fantastic. <laughs> for lowering, lowering your stress, uh, chilling out in front of the TV, having a little bit of drink. Yes, you can drink alcohol. We'll talk about that another time. Have a little bit of a drink, a little bit of wine. That's fine. You know, do something to de-stress yourself. Okay, whatever it is. If you're in a high-powered job, if you're a job where you're getting yelled and shouted at, that's no good for diabetes, diabetics. We've all, I've been there, so you know it happens. And lastly, um, you can catch me. If you like this video, uh, I'm on a, a Facebook uh, group called Diabetes Canada. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put this on the, on the floor because <laughs> it's a bit wobbly. Sorry about that. I'm on a Facebook page called Diabetes Canada and uh, I usually wax lyrical. I usually talk a lot of crap. I usually waffle on and some people don't like me and some people do. It's just the way I am. So if you want to get in touch with a good group of people, 
I think there's plenty of diabetes support groups out there on Facebook. This is the one that I'm on. Um, it is a private group, so basically, uh, when you post things on it, it doesn't get copied to it. Uh, it doesn't get copied to everyone. It's you can't do a Google search. So if you want to say something which is kind of, um, which is kind of like uh, sensitive, it doesn't go anywhere. Um, and like anything, listen carefully. Right? Do not get diagnosed. Do not take medical advice from anyone on the internet, including me, <laughs> including me, because what might work for me might not work for you. And it's not that I'm saying something stupid or incorrect or I'm wrong. It's that you, okay, are different to me. So by all means on these groups, ask questions. I, this is happening, that's happening. And some people will tell you, don't take diagnosis. Your best person to get diagnosis help from is a good, known and trusted endo, number one. A good, trusted doctor and DSN and a dietitian. All those three are good to bounce questions off. Okay, I, I know not all DSNs give the same advice, not all the same endos give the same advice, but what do you do? I know by trial and, trial and error, by asking questions, and I have specific questions which I ask people if I don't know for the first time, and if they come back with bullshit, I walk away. Don't take bullshit from anyone. You can't. Uh, and what else do I want to say on this? Yeah, diabetes is for life. If you've been diagnosed with diabetes, anything but pre-diabetes, there's another thing we're going to. If you've been diagnosed with diabetes, believe me, you can't kind of be diabetic. You are. It's like saying I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of pregnant, but it's going to go in a couple of go away in a couple of weeks. No, you're full on, hardcore, diabetic. You're part of the group. Welcome. So I hope you enjoy this. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm going to try and keep it short and sharp. I'm probably not going to. I don't know how long this video is. And uh, again, please like and subscribe. Definitely put any comments in there if you think about the video, how I can improve it, and anything else you want me to have a chat with you about. Again, this is my own personal view from my own experience. I'm not giving you medical advice. But most of that is, I think all of that is true. <laughs> Feel free to Google up and uh, see. So, I'm yours truly, Big J and J. So, peace out in time. I'm out. I feel like a thief in life. God bless you. Stay safe and uh, have a great day. Bye for now.